Welcome to Yachtcast. I'm lucky enough to be in Hawaii and I'm extra lucky enough to have Shane Dorian right next to me. Thanks for joining the Yachtcast, Shane. Oh, yeah, of course. Happy Happy to be here. Here. Thank you. Yeah, I was just watching you out there with surfing with your son. You pushed Jackson into a little wave and he ripped it. How's yeah. that feel? Oh, it's, it's great. Um, yeah, it's just perfect out there today. You know, it's like head high, a little bit overhead. And um, yeah, my son's over here for a couple of days and just, just uh, getting a few surfs in and it's like perfect conditions for him. So this is. is his first time. I took him out to pipe yesterday you for did? his first time wow. ever at yeah. Pipeline, which is, you know, he Big. was all excited. He sees all the, sees the webcasts and all the, all the surf videos and stuff. Everyone's surfing Pipeline. And he saw Gabriel, he went, that's Gabriel Medina. That's, that's, <laughs> that's Adriano D'Souza. That's, yeah. that's, that's Joe Parkinson is freaking out, you know? So yeah, it was pretty cool. And it was not, it was like four to five feet, wasn't it? He was yeah, out there? It was yesterday. That's great. And how old's Jackson now? He just turned 10. Just turned 10. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. I think Jay about the same age, probably, yeah, maybe a bit older, surf pipe for the first time. Yeah. Oh, this year, yeah. It's pretty exciting. It's, it is it's exciting. funny as a parent, though, you know. It's, it's scary. We've all had so many crazy situations out there. Even when it's little, sometimes you get really hurt. So I, I'm, I'm the kind of parent that kind of, he's kind of a radical child, so I kind of have to like reel him back in all the time. Really? Yeah. If you've got daddy as the big wave rider, and does he want to do that? <laughs> oh, I don't think so. No. <laughs> and I hope not. It's uh, not, it's yeah. not anything I want him to do. So no. I just, I'm just so stoked that he likes to surf. I actually yeah. had to wait a pretty long time. I think, I think we had the opposite. So, he didn't start so early. No, uh -huh. I got him on a board really early. And yep. then I think he got to the point where he realized his old man did it for, that was like his old man's thing. Yeah. So then he was like, I want my thing. So he started uh -huh. skateboarding all the time. Okay. Yeah. And then, so he skateboarded for a long time and then he just kind of found surfing organically and now he's really psyched on going Found surfing every day. Self. Yeah, that's so. cool. A lot of fun. Yeah, I think I've got to do that with my youngest too, Jonah. He, I took him and then he turned off it and now he's into his tennis and I'm yeah. hoping just in his own time that yeah. he'll get back. It's just so fun when they find it because I don't care Either way. whether he wants to do anything else except for like, I don't, I'm not like, I don't care whether he surfs a contest or longboards or anything. I just. All I care about is if we can go surfing together, you know, because it's such a rad thing to bond with your kids with, you know, so mm. it's a lot of fun. It always can be a worry, hey, I mean, like, you don't want them to, like, turn out, like, gothic and, like, no. listen to heavy metal and, like, wear makeup and stuff, like, I think that... <laughs> There's a lot of risks as There's a parent. A lot of, You're like, there is. You can do anything you want except that, for this, 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 yeah, this. <laughs> down the line. Yeah. I think, you know, remember Jack McCoy's Cooper. Yeah. Um, Cooper turned out yeah. a bit like that for a yeah, while. Yeah, I think he's, pretty I think he's, yeah, 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 he went dark and... All gothic, but I think he's back to normal now. But um, but you know, you just gotta. Yeah, you sort of get what you get, though. Don't you get you? what you get. Yeah, you really do. Yeah. So no um, no pipe for you this year. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm not doing the trials and the pipe masters this year. I did it for so, I did it for so many years. Yeah. I don't feel any yeah. need at all to do it, and yeah. and they only have so many spots. Yep. So even though Billabong's all always like, hey, do you want to do the trials? Yeah. It'll be fun. Mm. I'm always thinking like, there's like a younger guy coming mm. up that it means a lot to them, you know. Yeah. So. I don't really want to take up that spot where yep. you could, could put someone in there who's really excited and mm. fired up and that's like their first chance, you know? First so chance. that's And the first experience too. We've yeah. Had, you've had so many experiences. I've had a lot and, yeah. and I'm just, it's fun for me to be here on the beach, on the sand of the Billabong house, hanging out and just seeing all the guys and um, kind of cheering them on and, and watching them surf with zero pressure is great. Yeah. yeah. No, cool. And how's Lisa going? Great. Yeah. Lisa, my wife is is fantastic. She's uh, she's back on the Big Island. She's back on the Big Island. Yeah, it's hard. You know, these days the kids are school. in school full time. It's, mm. They make it so hard to get them out. So yeah. she's home uh, with my daughter, and yeah, we got Christmas vacation coming up. So we're gonna spend a lot of time together and cool. hanging out. But yeah, she's she's busy as ever, balancing right. the yep. the mom work thing. You know. Yeah. And uh, the hunting. Has there been any hunting trips lately? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I squeezed a few hunting trips in. I have a couple really good friends that I hunt with, and. So we had some stuff come up, and um, Where'd so, you go? so we did a couple of rad adventure hunts. I went to I went to Utah wow. to hunt elk yep. for a week in September, and then I and I usually only do that once a year where I get like a week long hardcore hunting trip because mm -hmm. I'm so busy doing everything else. But then I was able to squeeze in another one in November, like right after the Jaws event. Actually, oh, wow. the waves went flat, and my yeah. friend offered offered to uh, take me hunting and. So I went and did it and we went to uh, Eastern Colorado and wow. it was crazy. I was hunting deer 
and it was I was hunting in this crazy like I usually do like a lot of like mountain hunting mm -hmm. like high elevation alpine type of stuff where it's like gnarly elements and and you know semi almost like a survival trip wow and those are really fun for me but this one was this one was like I was hunting basically like the Midwest like yeah. flat as this table for hundreds of miles and like cornfields and milo fields and like agriculture tractors everywhere wow. and it was it was like from like 10 to 20 degrees wow. so Cold. like in the u.s 10, 10 degrees i don't know what that is for in, you guys in, but for australia yeah, it's, it's way it's minus. way way below it, freezing it's minus yeah 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 so i was like hunting in snow every day wow. and really cold one? weather i got one yeah and did you take it home I took it home, yeah. we ate it there in Colorado, and then I brought about 100 pounds home. So you dress it and then put it in yeah. the, on the plane? Yeah. No problem. Yeah, just put it in bags, put it in the freezer, and bring it all meat home. Epic. So my family is stoked. They actually like to eat uh, deer as their favorite is it really? meat to eat. So oh. I try and get as many deer as I can okay, cool. with my bow. With your bow? It's just bow only, hey? Only bow, yeah. Wow. I tried I tried hunting with a gun at first, Yeah. Um, but it wasn't my right. thing. Yeah, the, the thing. gun thing, the gu guns, I don't know. I just don't like the noise and all that yeah. kind of stuff. So. Yeah, I, so I, quiet up there. I really enjoy uh, it's crazy. hunting with a bow. Yeah, I, I like one of my favorite shows is Survivor, and I yeah. and I think of you when I watch it. Um, but you don't watch that. You don't watch TV, do you? We don't have television at my house, but yeah. I've seen that show. You have seen the show. Yeah, I've seen, I've cool. seen a, a couple of those yeah. survival shows. Those guys are super legit. The, yeah. the, those are my by far my favorite kind of hunts. Yeah, is when I'll go either by myself or just with one friend, and it's almost like a survival trip. It where is. Like, you're you're pumping well, your you're own water the, and, and, and snow, making like, making sure your water's survive. clean and, yeah. and having to cook yeah, right. your own food and basically like you do backcountry hunts where you have all of your ultralight gear like your your ultralight tent ultralight sleeping bag it has to be warm enough so you don't freeze mm. you have to have all your gear totally ready mm. um, and then when you get an animal on the ground you have to be ready to activate as well because you want that meat to be in your freezer perfectly you don't want to so you have to care for the meat correctly. You have to know mm -hmm. how to exactly how to skin the animal, wow. exactly how to keep all the meat clean, yeah. exactly how to cut it properly. So where you you, you go to prepare the meat, we it's told you great. All this time. Uh, it's, you it's been a long learning curve, right. but um, yeah. I've had a couple hunting mentors that okay. guys who grew up with a bow in their hand and yeah. they, right. you know, grew up in the mountains like we grew up surfing. Yeah. So um, for me, I found bow hunting pretty late, like when I was 30. Mm -hmm. But it's just fun, man. It's like it's not so much about. I love I love getting my own food and bringing it home for my family and yeah. cooking and all that stuff is really important. But even more so than that, it's, it's not that much different than surfing where, and it's probably hard for people to understand that. But like for me, like, like for a typical guy who's like, who works all week and at the end of the week, they go golfing on Saturday yeah. with their uh -huh. boys or they go surfing and that's mm -hmm. the thing that keeps them sane. That's kind of like hunting is for me. Like mm. if I'm stressed out or I'm, I did a ton of trips or I've been, mm. I haven't done anything for a while. I always just want to get my bow in my hand and just go in the mountains wow. and walk around for a couple days. So it's just quiet. Yeah. Wow. That's so cool. Have you ever hunted in Molokai? Molokai? Yeah, I have. Is it like back on the back of Wailau there, you know, you can yeah, get in I by have boat. Actually. Yeah. yeah. It's beautiful back it's there. It's cool. Hey. Yeah. Molokai is a interesting island. It's, it's much different than the other islands in Hawaii just sure because is. it's so undeveloped and it's it's pretty uh, it's pretty pristine and still in like a it's it's a pretty laid back zone with real mellow people compared to a lot of other places in Hawaii you know and they have shitloads of deer and you know there's probably forty thousand deer on that island and probably only yeah. only maybe three thousand people who live there so yeah. it's just a it's a great place to be for sure like whether you're into um, hunting or surfing or fishing yeah. or that, that's what it's all about there you yeah. know it's not about anything else no nah, I remember Cowie Hill. Yeah. Well, this bull out here. Yeah. He lived there uh, in front of Rock yeah. Point, and I, I went and stayed with him for a while. It was beautiful, and we got in his boat and went around to yeah. to um to Wailau there. Yeah. And surfed and yeah. Yeah. Very people very live out there. Very uh very um contained and localized though. We yeah, got to make sure that your yes. your audience <laughs> yes. knows that that the that going to Molokai is not on there. Yeah. surf destination list definitely <laughs> <laughs> so um let's get back to surfing um so you went hunting straight after jaws and i want to ask about jaws this year i remember um last year when you went for the early surf before the kind of started last year it started really big in the morning didn't yeah. it and you took that crazy giant. drop <clears throat> giant drop yeah and um that was such an but one of the better big waves i've ever seen ridden and then this year how did the kind go for you did you go for an early this year before the contest? I did. You did? I actually got the best wave I caught all day was right before the contest people, started again. again. Yeah. Same as last year. Yeah, it's funny, like, my, I've done so much competing in my whole life, but I, mm. I, I for me, big waves and competing, they, they don't... Don't mix, you think? For me, personally. Not really. 
yeah. from my personal experience, like I actually like watching big wave events. Yeah, I love it. But that. I don't really like competing in them. Wow. And um, that's just being honest. Like I, I can't turn it on and off. Mm. I can't say, oh, okay, the horn, the horn blew. Now I'm ready. Yeah, it's like I, right. I need to when the waves are really big, especially with like the, the like the bigger the waves really are and the more serious it is. Yeah. I don't like have I don't like putting any pressure at all on myself. You, see, you might just happens because usually you're gonna you want to be out there when the swell's peaking and get yeah. the, the the king wave. I'm but not it trying to get it mightn't happen yeah. in the heat, hey. Oh, it's almost a guarantee not gonna happen yeah, right. in the heat. And and so for me my my whole strategy with big waves is number one coming home safely is my number one goal. Yeah, yeah. And anything after that is 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 extra. Um, so like home, my whole thing is when the waves are gonna be big, say Jaws for instance, I, I go over there with the goal of getting one wave that I'm gonna remember forever. That's yeah. all I care about. So, yeah. And so like last year- You can't year, win a contest on one wave. No, you can't win a contest on one wave. Yeah. And, and for me, getting that one wave that I'm gonna remember forever, that's really important to me. Mm. Um, winning contests, uh, whether it's, whether it's um, you know, in my best interest or not. It's not that mm. important to me, to be honest. Mm, and yeah. so I really just am out there trying to get that one wave that's gonna like blow me away and, and mm. get really I'm excited about it and I'll, I'll remember that forever. So last year, right before the event started, I got a wave that was so intense, like it was a, a hundred out of a hundred for me mm. on a personal level mm -hmm. of like my ability level and needing to take all of my experience and all of my ability and all of my focus and confidence into that moment. And when I successfully rode that wave, I was like, like my mind automatically, subconsciously was like, hey, you're good. You're good for the you day. You can just chill. Yeah, chill. Because that's what I do. Like but if I get it. a really good one, I'm <laughs> you, done. I'm good. Yeah. I just relax because I don't want to get greedy. It's real dangerous. And, yeah, for sure. Um, and then I had to like put a jersey on and go back out there and try and get a backup wave. And, yeah. And so oh, no. it's pretty funny. I wonder, but, I wonder if they could change the format maybe and just yeah. put all you guys out there when the swell's peaking and maybe get yeah. that one wave for the win. They could. They, they could. could. I, I think they're not far off of it being a pretty good system. I think. Yeah. I think if they could implement um, priority, it'd be really good. Yeah, right. It's really difficult in Ooh, those these guys have got no priority. The there. guys who win those contests are really good at hassling. Hassling, yeah. Yeah. Still, they're really, hassling in ways really that size. Yeah. Far out. It's like a WQS with boards. no with no priority. QS with six man. Yeah. Six man? Imagine a QS no priority. with no priority. Like, that's literally what it's like. Oh wow. Well, yeah, so I, I, like I, there's that's blocking. So there's guys blocking you and like, oh. like paddling and yelling even if they know they're not going. I and keeping you off know. of waves and they'll get like two small scores and then try and battle you and get you out of it's like it's prison rules. I didn't know that was yeah, happening it's out totally there. Totally like that. I thought you guys were full respecting each other just Yeah, no. 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 It's um but it's 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 exciting, you know, I but I think as far as the performance goes for those events, I think if they do, if they do end up implementing um, a priority system, it's, mm. which is like right now there's a six man heat and they say, oh, it's be too hard to do priority. But it's if not. you had a four man priority yeah. and then the, and the lowest two guys in the priority, so they just, just don't have priority at all and they can just do what until they, they get to that four, yeah. fourth position. And then you just work your yeah. way out. It could easily happen. Yeah. And then I think that would be better for performance too, because yeah. a lot of times you have to be too deep in order to to maintain position, yeah, right. and then that's no fun for anybody to watch. You uh, want to, want to see the guys be getting barreled and yep. taking late drops, but being in the right spot, yep. you know. So, yep. yeah. Oh wow, that's we'll interesting. See. Thank you. Um, Joel Parkinson threw this question at me. He usually does it on every time, and I think it's a question that I probably would have asked. And uh, it's a no-brainer, and everyone in the world probably wants to know your worst wipeout. Where was it? Mavericks or Hawaii or where? Oh man, I've had a couple. I had a really bad one when I was. I think I was 18 or 19. 18, oh jeez, yeah. going way back. Out at Himalayas, a, oh, okay. um, an outer reef here on the North Shore. Yep. I was out there with Todd Chester and Brock Little and I, yep. I had just started really getting into big waves. Mm -hmm. And um, the, it was like 25 feet that day. It was a real big day. Um, like the kind of day where Waimea is like borderline closing out. Oh wow. And we went out there and- um, What were you guys doing out there, my goodness. And it was really good. Did you and have I, a ski out there with you? Nah. No, there nah. was, we never had, jet no. skis back then no. no safety plan no 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 one looking out for us at all yeah um, then Todd Chester drowned doing the same thing right yeah yeah and just you know you just when the waves are big you grab your big board with yep. your big leash and you jump yep. off the You're shore and you paddle out there that's heavy and I got out there with those yep. guys and um I ended up going on a wave I I I was trying to I think I was like you know I was pretty impressionable back then and this wave came in that I had no business trying to go on and I thought, you know, I'm gonna go no matter what. You know, these 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 guys that I look up to are yeah, out here. Right. Yeah. So I whipped it and went. Yeah. 
and uh, I was just way too late and got the wind knocked out of me as I fell on the bottom. The, the lip hit me, the wind knocked out of me, and I yeah. got held under for, um, when the second wave passed over my head. Two waves, hold it, two waves, Yeah, so I was underwater for a long time, and I was going, doing that, that kind of thing. Yeah. <clears throat> and I, I remember trying to swim up, and then that was all I remembered. I, I remember the wave, the next wave breaking, I could hear it and rolling over me. The third wave, then, you mean? No, the second wave. Second wave, yeah, yeah. And then I, I didn't have any air, and I ended up um, having a really crazy, um, real close call there. Kind of out of body experience. Yeah, kind of? it was actually. It was. It sounds real, not to sound super cosmic, but yeah. it was one of those things where it's difficult to explain. But yeah. I, I kind of um, regained consciousness like maybe eight feet from the surface yeah. and um, kind of kicked my way to the top. And I, all this foam and shit was coming out of uh, my mouth. And this um, third wave. I no, swallowed no a third wave. Lucky there enough. was no third wave. Wow. And I remember that was just a really close call, and I was crying like a. Yeah. baby and really freaked out and then I remember Brock Brock came to the beach with me and um, he kind of gave me a little pep talk it was like hey like this happened to me when I was around your age and mm. the main thing is when the next time the waves are big you have to go back out you have to you got to get back on the horse kind of okay, thing okay. so I got pretty lucky the next week there was another big swell and I no went worries. back out there with those guys and Same spot. had a great session yeah okay had a really good session Fell a couple times, but had a good, good session overall, and I got back on the horse. And Sweet. Yeah, I've been I've been slight on surfing big waves ever since, and then. Ever since, yeah, but then. Yeah. And, and then you, I, you would have been on tour back then. I, I was just starting, to, just starting. To, to try to qualify them. Yeah, and so you just qualified just after that. Yeah, yeah. so I just qualified after that, and then yeah. I did the tour for 11 years. Yep. Um, and then I, it was but really. The, but in the back of your mind, doing the tour the whole time, I mean, you were always after big waves, obviously, because you'd done the Eddie and stuff. Yeah. At a pretty young age, didn't you? Yeah. And then, um, but were you thinking, did you know there was going to be a big wave career after retiring straight away? Or No, not, not really. really. Okay. I was always interested in big waves. Yeah. It just, I was very limited in my time, you know, because, yeah, the tool you know, when you're, so when you're competing time. all year and then you have like basically one month off, um, it's really difficult to focus on anything but the tour. And then, yeah. um, and then I stopped. Yeah, I stopped in 2005. And I started getting really into surfing big waves, just more and more, you know, I got really passionate about it. I, I finally and had the time to really train and put a lot of effort into chasing big waves. And, and then I had a really bad wipeout and um, I'd always wanted to go to Mavericks. Yeah, okay. So it was my first time ever going to Mavericks. I remember telling Greg Long, like, hey, look, like, I've never been to Mavericks. I want to choose the right swell. The next time it's really good, will you let me know? So the swell rolled around and looked like a good one. And the first day I had a bunch of good waves had a really, really good session and my confidence was real high. The next day, um, I was ready to like send it on any wow. wave. And um, this wave came to me, it looked really good. It actually was a good wave, but I ended up hitting a chop mm. going down the face and going over the handlebars, getting mm. sucked over the falls mm. and getting held under for two waves. And I had a really close call there two waves again. again. I didn't black out, but oh. I was on the borderline oh. of it. Um, and it's I didn't have- It sounds like a similar yeah. thing that happened to Mark Fu. Yeah. And he didn't make it. Yeah, he didn't make it. Yeah. Yeah. So we've had similar a, wipeout. we've had a few uh, close friends of ours die at Mavericks. And yeah. Similar wipeouts. Similar wipeouts. Yeah. 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 And it, the thing is getting held under for two waves is the thing that it really, um, if you get held under for a long time, you have a pretty good chance of surviving. But if you yeah. get held under for two waves, it really changes your odds. And so at the time I wasn't wearing any foam flotation. Nothing. And there was nothing out there that was anything but maybe like a thin impact vest where it was just basically foam that would help you your buoyancy a little yeah, bit yeah um and because of that I had you invented I, the the best yeah, up there didn't you yeah wow. so after that actually right after that mm -hmm. i went in i was in shock and I, I had a concussion and um i got on a plane and went home and i remember on the plane thinking it was really going to be hard to to justify continuing surfing big waves you know because it's just too too much risk basically and um too much yeah too much risk and you know i was you got kids I had a young family and my wife and you know pretty irresponsible so i um i basically uh i remember being on that plane and the, they did the they did the safety speech where it was like oh yeah right where it was like oh if we're if we're if in we, a if yeah. we if you need oxygen here's an oxygen mask yeah. and they did the oxygen mask and a little puffer thing yeah and I remember it just like, it like turned the light bulb on Did for they? me. I was no like, way. that's, the life that's vest. like a, yeah, Pull life vest thing. Vest. And so when I got off that plane, I went on the internet and did some research to see if there was something out there 
that was like a safety mechanism that I could use CO2 with. And there wasn't, there wasn't anything. And so I called up Scott Boot from Billabong that yep. was doing a wetsuit program at the time. Yep. Um, and another guy named Hub who was doing the wetsuits too. And I said, hey, look, this is what I have in mind. I don't think there's anything out there. Can we work with a company to make like a, a, an, an air bladder with a CO2 cartridge in the wetsuit? And what did he say? It's hard to believe now that there was nothing that was like that at the nothing. time, but there wasn't anything. And so, so we, end up, we, we ended up um, developing the first the what first did he first say suit. when um, he did he was like, what do you mean? Or did he did he? Yeah, did he, they, he, they were like a light bulb clicked could, on him too. No, going, yeah, not, not as much. Not as much. They were like, if you want to try that, we can try that. Um, you know, I don't know how hard it's going to be to do it. And yeah. I, I did up with some sketches of designs that yeah. I was thinking would work because uh -huh. I wanted to basically make it exactly like a wetsuit now, but make yeah, it inflatable. Right. Yeah, I didn't want some like big safety thing, you know, like a big safety device. So. So we ended up making one and it ended up, I didn't, I had pretty low expectations to be honest. Mm. And I was not developing it for like the masses. I was mm. developing it for my for own you. justification yeah. to yeah. surf big waves. I yeah. didn't, I didn't think like, oh, maybe everyone's going to want to use this. Yeah, right. I was just thinking, shit, I'm, this is dangerous yeah. Yeah, and yeah, I want to yeah. be safer. And the first prototype ended up working super good. Actually, like right when I got the prototype, like three days later, Jaws was huge. And that and was you, the first time I ever paddled it. And who, who were you out there with that day? I was out there with, uh, uh, Ian Walsh, yeah. um, Kai Lenny was out that day. Uh -huh. I think Craig Long was out yeah. that day. And they didn't have it, and you did? No one had it but me. No one had had what? any suit what like that they, in the world. What, what did they say? Me. They were tripping. Were they? I sh showed it to them, yeah, and yeah. it was like, I just pull the th pull it, yeah. and it would go, and they're like, what? And it's like having like a buoy on yeah. your back. Yeah, and, like, and they they were me? just like, no, nah. they just couldn't believe it. You know, it was like. It was just such an obvious thing yeah, after right. the fact. Yeah. So it's definitely, um, you know, that was the first incarnation of the idea. And then, you know, ever since then, we've been, we've been, you know, like R&Ding better, better versions of it. And there's other companies now that are doing it and stuff. So basically any given day, whether you're at Mavericks or an Outer Reef or at yeah. Jaws, yeah. like 100% of the people out there have oh, inflatable suits Did on, you yeah. paint in that? Oh. Yeah, we have it. Oh, you did? Yeah, oh, cool. we have it patented. Oh, yeah. Sorry to ask that question. No, that's all right. <laughs> yeah, no, but, um, I, I patented it along with Billabong. So. Oh, epic, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Um, you know, the plane, it's funny when you thought of that. I mean, they give you life jackets, and usually if the plane crashes in the water, not, there's not a high success rate mm -hmm. of making it. I reckon they should give you parachutes. Yeah, it's And true. it's your choice. If, like, and make it easier down, to jump out. Yeah. You can get out. If you're true. brave enough, give, a, give yourself a parachute. It's eh? a much more realistic. I know. I've always thought yeah. that when they did that safety thing, I think yeah. they should be giving parachutes. Yeah, where's my parachute? <laughs> I really don't need oxygen, I need a parachute. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, I've got some questions here, um, but I've probably already asked you all of them. Um, well, actually, maybe there's a question here that I don't know. Yeah. Did your dad surf? He did. He did? Yeah, my dad My dad was from California. He, uh -huh. he, um, he was born and raised in LA. And okay. He he had, but he had you on the big island, I mean, in Hawaii? Yeah. yeah. So he, he grew up surfing in California, yep. in okay. LA. Uh -huh. And then um, in the 50s, in the early 50s, he moved to Hawaii. Okay. He got sick of LA and yep. moved to Hawaii to live a mellow lifestyle. And yep. yeah, he met my mom and had me. I was, I was born and raised in Kona yep. on the big island. Yep. And I've been living there pretty much ever since. Yeah. I wonder, when I'm in California and I look around, I think, because you're allowed to move to Hawaii because it's the state of America. Why doesn't everyone do that? It's yeah. crazy. I mean, I guess there's not a lot of work here, but... When you're on the freeway here in Hawaii, it kind of seems like everyone has done it, but yeah, it's, definitely, yeah, when there's traffic, yeah. it's definitely a good, a, good, a good option. I mean, I was looking at, a, I was looking at this map yesterday. It was, yeah. like, it, was a, it was a map of the United States, including Alaska and Hawaii, and it was a map of how many hours per week you had to work to survive. So it was like how expensive each state oh, was. Really? So it was how many hours each week you had to work to to make enough money to survive in each state, okay. based on minimum wage. It was Hawaii and Hawaii, then, Hawaii was the highest. Most highest, yeah. The highest. So there was a lot of states that were in like the, uh, I forget what it was. It was like, it was like Hawaii was like triple what the cheapest state was. Yeah. It is the, expensive. The, the cost yeah. of living is crazy in Hawaii. It is. I mean, yeah. food land is so expensive. I just went yeah. to Ted's and got two plate lunches and a couple of drinks. It cost me $41. Yeah, it's crazy. It's, it's expensive. 
Yeah, but you can't even so buy a slab for that in, in, in Australia. <laughs> you can buy a slab for 40. Just barely. You get a discount at the Budlow, <laughs> 45 bucks. But that's 24 beers and that makes like, that's $2 a beer. Yeah. That's cheap. True. That, that is, is cheap. Anyway, <laughs> um, what's some other questions? Um, okay, what are the top three big wave spots in the world and why? I know probably what the top two are. Have you got three? Oh man, that, that's one of your favorites. It's or more not? of a that's a matter of of um, that's just like saying where you think the best waves are in the world. It's like I know it can happen anyway, can't it? Jaws for sure, for sure, yeah. by far and away is yeah, the best, yeah. I think, and that's yeah. just a fact. That's, it is that's it looks my like opinion, it. but I also think there's no way you could possibly think that any other wave is better than Jaws. I mean, it just has everything. Just because the water's warm and the, it's and just it has such everything. a beautiful setup. The size, the intensity, it's the like, shape of the wave. The, it's just like a huge V-land. The pretty good <laughs> wave that you get at Jaws is way better than the best wave that you get it anywhere else. Yeah, yeah. I don't care Why where. Ma Mavericks. Yeah. yeah, yeah. doesn't even compare. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and, then, and then I would say um, Mavericks is up there, especially for consistency. You get a lot of good days at Mavericks. And then I would say the Third, I would say, is um, Nazare, Nazare in Portugal. Well, you, have you paddled that wave? I have. You kidding me? Yeah, I paddled it a few years back. No way. Yeah. Which way are you going? Sancho. Left only. I uh, right. Oh, with Sancho. You're I got a couple right. lefts, but I got mostly rights. But can't you get seriously cleaned up there if you go right? Oh yeah. You can yeah. get seriously cleaned up at Jaws yeah. though. Yeah, you can. Yeah. So, um, and it's a beach break there. It's scary, but it's it's all sand. And you know, you have good water safety and stuff like that. Yeah. But as far as like the size goes, like when I was there, it was like a, it was like a mediocre big swell for there. Uh -huh. And it was giant, giant. absolutely giant. Just cause of the way it wedges. Yeah, so the- It triples so the, in, uh, doubles in size. Triples. Doubles in size, it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So Even that wave I think foot. has a lot of potential. I think a lot of the, in the next 10 years, a lot of the best big waves we'll, we'll see besides yeah. Besides Jaws, will be at Nazare, yeah. And it's not too cold there, or? No, it's not too cold. Not You're wearing like a 4.3. Yeah, right. So it's, it's actually a, warmer than Mavericks, for sure. Yeah, is there a big wave event that's, is it going yeah. on? The waiting As, period's on uh, at the moment? Yeah, the waiting period's on now. And in fact, in I, got a, um, I got an email last night yeah. from Peter Mel saying they might, they might call it on, so. Wow. Um, so you're in that event? There's a swell coming out in about wow. four days. Four days. I'm, I'm in the event technically, but I don't know if I'll go. You if they call know. it on, I'm not sure. You're gonna have a good look at it. I'm gonna have a good look at it. I kind of been, I've been dealing with sort of like a muscular back issue oh, for yeah. like a year. Yeah. And so it's, I don't know, my back's, it's okay. Like I can surf a bit, but it's, it's kind of, it's not the strongest. Okay. I'm only like one bad wipe out away from like having something bad. Oh, yeah. So when did, yeah. did that, is that just a, a long term injury or did, have you done that? I, I know you took that heavy wipe out at Jaws last year. Yeah. In the Con S, was it that? that no, I was already hurt actually. You were already hurt. Yeah. It's weird. It's on, it's in my back, but it's one of those typical back situations that stemmed from like an old injury. Yeah. So I had a bad, I had a, I had a broken bone in my right foot and torn ligaments in my left. Mm -hmm. And I think the way I healed up, it's pulling my, it's pulling my muscles in my back a certain direction and just, yeah. so all the pain's there, but it's yeah. the, the, the issues in my feet. Oh wow. So I have to do a bunch of work. Okay. In fact, right after this, I'm, I'm going to physical therapy. So to you try are. and figure it out a little bit more. Oh, so you can wear like soles, different soles. They can make special soles up for yeah. your shoes, but in Hawaii you don't wear shoes. Never wear shoes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there goes yeah, I rarely theory. even wear sandals. <laughs> yeah, you could do it in yeah. your sandals maybe. Yeah. I remember, yeah, but in your shoes you can. One, one time I had a sore back and I still have just an on, a lot, there's just been a surfing injury that yeah. just for going. Your back's the same hard, way. man. It's backs like, are hard. Eh? Yeah. So some mornings you wake up and it's like, ah, oh, it kind of happened this morning. I went for like a two hour walk and it feels all right, but. Yeah. But it's true, hey, surfing. Yeah. If you surfing. go switch foot more. And <laughs> yeah. I know you love to surf switch foot. And balance it out, yeah. Remember the heats you had with Kelly? If you, go, yeah. you guys drew each other, you'd go first wave switch foot? Always, yeah. Always, hey. We did it, uh, we did it a lot of places. The first place we did it, we were, we were juniors. Um, and we were in the pro junior at Narabeen. Oh, you've done it, that started way yeah, back then? Yeah, way Shit. back then. We were, no, I think we were 18. And we both went switch foot on our first waves. And it was such a prestigious junior event. They're tripping on it. Yeah, the people, the, or, the <laughs> event organizers they and people bummed. on the beach, they were bummed. They thought that it was a disrespectful thing. And <laughs> it definitely didn't come from that. We were just like yeah. so excited to surf against each other. Yeah. And Kelly's like, let's go what switch. do you reckon we go switch on the first wave? And I was like, so excited. I was like, yeah, let's yeah. do it. So anyway, after that, we, we did it every time. We did it at Huntington. We surfed against each other. I think we did it at Trestles. We did it at Pipe. We did um, it you've at, done it at Chopo. We did it at Chopo, yeah. In the final. But um, Chopo. When, were you on the boat trip? 
the AP Brit. Yep. AP Brit was. Challenge. Remember we done it. And we Bruce. done it. Andy and Bruce and Sonny, yep. we done it for the whole heat. Remember yeah, we at did. macaronis. They went too stuck. They were either. so bummed. <laughs> Remember the kind of story that was really it's funny. Funny what we think is super funny and fun. <laughs> and other so people are like, no, that's not that funny. We were at macaronis <laughs> and it was perfect. It was six really good. Feet. Yeah. And we were bummed at the kind of director. Remember because. The Connors director was super weird, and we're like, <laughs> let's just do the whole heat switch. And yeah. he was, oh, he was, he was livid. He was livid. He was trying to put a show together and all that <laughs> stuff, and we were just going switch foot <laughs> in perfect waves. Yeah, it that's was pretty so funny. funny. We were, we were pretty jaded at the time, weren't and we? We were, and then because, and you know what else we done? <laughs> we sure had fun though. Yeah, we sure did. You know what else we done? We decided to split the prize money. Oh, we and did. And then I won, and I had to go back to Australia and pay tax on thirty grand. Are you so serious? I, I went negative money. I didn't make any and I won. And that was back then when like the, the um, like nowadays if you did that, you would just, you would just like if it was a Billabong event, you would tell the Billabong guys like, hey, it's just split it evenly. Yeah. But back then it was like you got paid and then you had to. Yeah, yeah. I just split it all and had paid That's tax on the funny. 30. That's crazy. But uh, that was such a fun trip. That was just great. To we the audience. Waves. Yeah, to the audience. We were in a, on a boat and it was called the AP Pro Boat Challenge, not to get mixed up with the AP Pro, yeah. which is in Huntington Beach. But yeah, so we were on it, we we're on a uh, really nice boat and we went all around the Mentawi um, area and we had an escort, didn't we? We had a yeah. police boat escort. So every spot we went to, they cleared the water for us. We had a permit for everywhere in and the Mentawi. Yeah, we would love crazy, it. Huh? It was so good. Yeah, that was insane. So good. It's, it's crazy the, the, It's crazy how much that region's changed, not to jump around on, on uh, subjects, but I remember the first time I went there, I don't think you were on the trip, actually. It was, I was there with Louie, I was there with Luke Egan, and um, Keith Malloy, and I think one other Australian guy, but it wasn't you, and we were on a boat, and there was only the whole mental wide chain from the very top yeah. Yeah. to the very bottom of Sumatra, there was only one other boat, and it was Martin wow. Daly's boat. Yeah. And oh, we were there you? for a month. You were, you were, Luke. and I wasn't on that trip, but it was Jack, Jack was making a movie, Jack, right? Yep. Jack made the movie, Sick and you were on the Parnia. Sick with, Joy, yep. And yeah, that and the boat Parnia, remember down. Captain Ken, yep. the crazy Captain Ken, yep. and they burnt that boat down, because yeah. I went on the boat after you guys, I think, and um, and then him and the cook were surfing, with, they didn't have a charter, yeah. and they left the, um, the uh, kettle, or the something kettle on, yep. yeah, the big kettle, and it ran out of water and caught a light, yep. the whole boat went down. Crazy. And they had to dive. Down to get the passport so to go crazy that how's was that crazy. story yeah. but it's crazy that we were there for a month yeah we saw one, one other, other boat, boat. Oh. one time and it was martin daly's boat and because it was a billabong quicksilver yeah right kind of You're like a, each other. yeah uh, it's they wouldn't even come close yeah, no. and we knew like tom and ross are all in that oh, boat no, tom no. tom carroll and ross clark jones we knew those guys were on the boat and for some reason our captains there was too much friction like yeah oh that guy has a boat here too and now there's like 500 boats there and never, there was literally only two boats. Yeah. And we didn't surf with one other person the whole time we were there. It's pretty crazy. So cool. But that was the good old days. That was, that was pretty back? special to be a part of that. You've been back there lately? Yeah, I've been, I've been back there. Um, and it's still amazing, it's still amazing destination. But it is crowded. It's crowded. There's a lot of land camps there. Like yeah. I went this year and stayed at No Can Dewey's in a beautiful camp. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, and there's boats in. But you know, still you can get, you can get still away. Good yeah, still good no, waves. Yeah, still good waves. The wave quality is so good. And, it's one of the best places in the world for like going, going on your, if you've been working all year and you want to go on a surf yeah. vacation and get really good waves, you're pretty much guaranteed. So. Yeah, I would uh, pretty recommend it for yeah. sure to everyone. Yeah. And talking about crowds, um, so that first time you surf Jaws with your vest, it was kind of the first time it was getting paddled anyway. Yeah. The skis, the skis had to stop. That's the rules, right? It was the very start the of that have to because stop. what did Laird say? And that were they bummed, or because their show was pretty much over? They were pretty baffled, to be honest. Yeah, yeah they, the um, you know there was on big days. But how could right before that there yeah. be sixty skis out there? And if you tried to paddle, they didn't. They, they didn't. Those, they those didn't guys get out. didn't care. So what just, happened? How did you did the did the government have to get involved? No, or? no, not at all. It just. It was it was lucky that we had like I was we were paddling at the very start with a couple guys like yeah. how I said yeah and then we had like a bunch of us there's a bunch of other guys that people probably wouldn't know but yeah they're a hardcore local younger crew on they're Maui paddling. Yeah. Paddling. yeah and they were they they were lo they were hardcore local guys so it was like oh it was them yeah so we'd go out there and there was a crew of us yeah. and it was like hardcore local guys yeah. that were younger yeah a younger crew coming up like yeah. Ian Walsh's brothers the twins uh -huh. and then um just there was a few of us yeah. and it was like it just for some reason 
we, those first couple swells, those guys in the skis, they gave us they enough gave respect to, yeah. to yeah. I remember the very first wave I caught. And they were still caught. towing at the same time that she was sharing? That kind kinda. Of? I kinda. remember the first day I paddled out. Yeah. The first day I paddled out at Jaws on a, on a, surf, on a surfboard, I paddled out there on a 10.6 brand new, never rode it before, just mm. had it made for Jaws. Mm. I was just like, oh, I'm just going to watch her for a while. And I was on a jet ski with Ian Walsh, and I jumped in the water, paddled out, and I'm like, oh, I'm just going to hang on the shoulder for a yeah. bit. And I just, next thing I know, I was just like, oh, sort of in the lineup, and a big set came, <laughs> and everyone started screaming. Go. And there was a bunch of tow teams out there. Yeah, right. And this massive set came in, and this, I went over the first wave, yeah. and the next wave was a giant one, like a really, really proper big one. Yeah. And there was a tow team on the wave, and they oh. saw me and kicked out and went, go, go, oh, go. Oh, you had to go. And I was like a deer in the headlights. Oh, like, oh, shit. This is my turn. It was like a, it was probably one of the biggest waves I've still ever oh, caught out there. Shit. And I turned around like, and I was on. like, I think I might be in the right spot. Yeah, and I just put my head down and I'm like, I'm probably not going to catch it, but I'm just going to have it, have a go. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. next thing I know, I just, I was you on. Mean, and then you made it. I made it and I had a great day. And then after that, we just gained momentum. Like yeah. everyone saw those first couple sessions and then it grew obviously exponentially from yeah. there. Everybody wanted to do it. And, yeah. um, and so um, now it's, it's kind of crazy out so there. So now there's no sharing, the skis aren't. Skis don't all. aren't no out there. If there's I mean, guys, skis for safety, if there's guys paddling, they're not towing no. at all. Okay. Now it's so totally flipped the other way. Like now, the other way. Yeah. now if you try to tow in there with when there's people surfing, it would yeah. not be cool. Okay. At all. Yeah. And um, what a, what I saw a photo of or a shot of Kai Lenny. Did they let him tow after you guys competed this year? Did yeah, they? Yeah. So was as that, what, soon as the as the finished? final was over, they let him tow. Well, people weren't surfing. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. So he just. Everyone was tired that was in the event. Yep. So they and the waves were just kind of substandard, so to be tired. honest. Yep. It wasn't that great. Um, so Kai was just, as soon as I saw Kai, right after, like even before the yeah. final was over, he was like, if no one surfs, I'm going to whip in a, yeah. a few. Yeah. Yeah. So he was just right yeah. on it. Okay, he cool. was ripping, huh? Ripping yeah, as an ripping. Air done. Yeah, and, and the cars ripping were the calves with insane. All time. Yeah, he's so good. So good, that He's so good on everything, too. And everything, he's like, hey. So good at toe surfing, really good at like stand up paddle. Yeah. He's like, He's almost better on the wave. He's really good on the wave on a normal surfboard, but yeah, yeah. when he has a paddle and everything, oh, it's, it's crazy how powerful how he, he is. Yeah. Powerful. So good. And um, another quick question. Did Laird ever paddle it? Not that I saw. No, not that you no. saw. No, I was just I'm sure he could. That. It would I'm be sure, awesome I'm to have sure. him out. Yeah, for I've, sure. I've talked to him a couple times since, yeah. and I'm, I'm, I told him, I'm like, man, I, I would be, it'd be so cool if you came to out and paddled it with yeah. us, you know? He's getting older now, I guess. And yeah, for but he's sure. he's super fit. I'm sure he could. Oh man, he's <laughs> fitter than most of the guys out there that are yeah, in their right. 20s. Yeah. He's about as fit as it gets for his age, for yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, well, cool. I think that's about it. Thank you so much, Shane. No worries, Doc. Thanks for having chat. me. Yeah, cheers. Thanks for having me. Cheers, guys. Yeah, boys.